Of all life's wonders, few are more fascinating than watching the young, how they first learn of the world around them. Each individual is born with built-in behavioral patterns. Some of these must be developed, learned by experience. What kind of food to eat, what dangers to avoid. Young lions are taught to hunt, young gulls how to land against the wind. In all animals, scientists now believe that the learning process depends upon a combination of factors, innate knowledge and learning from individual experience. <laughs> In Germany's Bavarian forest, young wild geese respond to an echoing call that has signaled them since birth. They fly not to the call of another goose, but to that of a man, Conrad Lorenz, renowned pioneer in the science of animal behavior. For more than 30 years, Dr. Lorenz has literally lived with flocks of birds, trying to understand their life and their world, how they learn, and how they are shaped as individuals. Here in this animal society, Lawrence has discovered greed, jealousy, and aggression, loyalty, and mating relationships that last a lifetime. The work of Conrad Lawrence gave rise to the Max Planck Institute for Behavioral Physiology at Seewiesen. To this renowned woodland hideaway, scientists from around the world have come to study a variety of animals. But most of Lawrence's research still centers on the wild geese. Now it's springtime. The goslings are hatching. By the constant chattering, the young learn to recognize the voices of their parents and the adults begin to know the sounds of their young. From the beginning, sound is a critical part in the life of the wild goose. Instinctively, the young cluster around the first adults they see, and so learn to identify their parents by sight. They are their protectors, teachers, and guides throughout the first months of life. Accepting as parents the first beings they see is part of the phenomenon known to scientists as imprinting. The look and the voice of the adults are indelibly etched on the young animal's mind. And what is once imprinted can never be erased. It is the beginning of their education, the primary stepping stone of life. In a sterile looking incubator, much of Lawrence's fascinating work has its beginning. Inside are still unhatched goslings who will be raised not by their natural parents, but by young students of Conrad Lorenz. Christine is the only parent these yet unborn geese will ever know. While in the egg, they begin to learn the sound of her voice. Imprinting has begun. From inside its egg, a gosling answers. For days, this process will continue. Finally, the goslings begin emerging in a laboratory where they will see no adult geese, no natural parent, only the young researcher whose voice they already know. Now begins a second stage of imprinting. Imitating the behavior of a mother goose, Christine begins to imprint her appearance, as well as her voice, in the newly hatched gosling's mind. The gosling responds, making its own distinctive sound. In nature, parents recognize their own offspring, in part, by their voices. Wee, 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 wee,
This experiment attempts to duplicate nature as closely as possible. Goslings are never raised alone, and so Christine will raise three together. For the first few days of their lives, they see no other creatures but Christine. No other geese, no other human being. She is their source of nourishment and security. The continual sounds between the researcher and the goslings is a form of reassurance. It tells both mother and offspring that the other is near. Now there is dramatic proof of just how successful the imprinting is. When the goslings suddenly realize that Christine is leaving, they chase after her, as if they were pursuing their real mother. It was in 1935 when Conrad Lawrence began his specialized experiments with wild geese, when the first group of these wild and free animals were imprinted upon the young scientist. Since that time, Lawrence and his colleagues have been followed by countless generations of geese. With his geese, Lawrence began to open up a new science and earn the nickname, the father of modern ethology, the study which deals with animal behavior. Lawrence discovered long ago that goslings and other living creatures follow beings they have been imprinted on. Today, foster parents are recognized by the pattern on their boots. One young family of goslings follows striped boots. Another group identifies its mother by polka dots. Still another by a zigzag design. And for one group, mother is a pair of striped boots on a pretty young blonde named Christine. Now the different groups of goslings are brought together. Until now, they have known only each other and their own foster parent. The power of imprinting is revealed. Not a single gosling strays or is distracted. They cling to the individual on whom they had been imprinted. There is no confusion no problem distinguishing their own foster parent. Part of Lawrence's work is devoted to gaining insight into the social order of the geese, how they relate to one another and how they find their station in life. It begins in part through inheritance. They will be influenced by the mother's rank. One student in the background acts the more dominant, the aggressor. Her outstretched hand is like the threateningly stretched neck of a goose. Her goslings, too, stretch their necks and attack. Christine and her goslings flee. Experiments such as these confirm what has been observed among geese living free. Once a goose or a family of geese has lost a fight, they will forever after yield to the individual or individuals that defeated them. When the student with the dotted boots assumes a high rank, Christine's low-ranking goslings flee. And so goslings learn and adopt their parents' rank. Summer is nearly over, and the once little goslings have grown into imposing adolescents. Throughout the summer, the rank order experiments have continued. Young geese still follow their human foster parents. And the rank order deliberately established by the researchers functions here as it would in a real society of wild geese. There are problems in applying insights gained from the behavior of geese and other animals to human behavior.
But geese and men, Lawrence believes, have common needs and comparable behavior. Conrad Lawrence's studies of animals have provided new insights into the behavior of the highest animal of all, man. It is the theory of Conrad Lawrence that rank order in animal societies seems to reduce the amount of fighting for food, mating partners, and other essentials of survival. Without rank, without a pecking order, there would be continuous fighting within the species. Soon, all the energy of that species would be exhausted by perpetual quarrels among its own kind. It would be doomed, unable to survive, in the deadly competition for food and living space with others. Rank order seems to prevent future quarrels by making the individual remember the lesson of one original fight. The young geese are now old enough and strong enough to stretch their wings. Now they must learn to use them to fly. As in 1935, Conrad Lawrence feels the personal responsibility to help his imprinted geese become independent, to fly and to live a normal life. The fact that these geese were raised by human beings will not prevent them from living as normal geese. For Conrad Lawrence and his students have been able to slip into the world of animals to understand their needs and language. These young geese have been raised as they would have been by their own kind. They will always return to their parents, but they are wild birds, not pets, and they are free. 